Hello students, today we are going to study main parts of a centrifugal pump. The following are the main parts of a centrifugal pump. The first one is impeller, next one is casing, other one is suction pipe with a foot wall and a strainer. And the last one is delivery pipe. Now we will study all these parts in detail starting with the impeller. The rotating part of a centrifugal pump is called impeller. It consists of a series of backward curved vanes. The impeller is mounted on a shaft which is connected to the shaft of an electric motor. Now the second part is casing. Casing of a centrifugal pump is similar to the casing of a reaction turbine. It is an airtight passage surrounding the impeller and is designed in such a way that the kinetic energy of the water discharged at the outlet of the impeller is converted into pressure energy before the water leaves the casing and enters the delivery pipe. It means that the casing should be so designed that kinetic energy of the water is directly converted into pressure energy. The following three types of casing are commonly adopted. We will see one by one in detail what are the three types of casings. First one is volute casing type 1. Second one is volute casing type 2. And the last one is casing with guide blades. We will start with the volute casing type 1. Now this figure shows the volute casing which surrounds the impeller which is shown here. It is of a spiral type in which area of flow increases gradually. It is shown here that the area of flow increases gradually which is shown here like this. The increase in area of flow decreases the velocity of flow. Due to this increase in area, the velocity of flow decreases. The decrease in velocity increases the pressure of the water flowing through the casing. It means that the decrease in velocity increases the pressure of the water flowing through the casing. It has been observed that in case of volute casing, the efficiency of the pump increases slightly as a large amount of energy is lost due to the formation of eddies in this type of casing. Now we will see volute casing type 2. If a circular chamber is introduced between the casing and the impeller as shown in this figure, the casing is known as vortex casing type 2. By introducing the circular chamber, the loss of energy due to formation of eddies is reduced to a considerable extent. It means that by introducing the circular chamber, loss of energy due to the formation of eddies is reduced considerably. Thus, the efficiency of the pump is more 
than the efficiency when only volute casing is provided it means that it is having better efficiency as compared to volute casing type 1 now we will move towards the third type of casing that is casing with guide blades this type of casing is shown in this figure that is figure b in which the impeller is surrounded by a series of guide blades which is shown here like this which is mounted on a ring which is known as diffuser the guide vanes are designed in such a way that the water from the impeller enters the guide vanes without shock also the area of the guide vanes increases thus reducing the velocity of flow through guide vanes and consequently increasing the pressure of water it means that with the increase in the area of the guide vanes reduction in the velocity of flow takes place in the guide vanes as well as due to this the pressure of water increases the water from the guide vanes then passes through the surrounding casing which is in most of the cases concentric with the impeller which is shown here now we will move towards the next main part that is suction pipe with a foot valve and a strainer a pipe whose one end is connected to the inlet of the pump and other end dips into the water in a sump is known as suction pipe it means that a pipe which is having one end connected to the inlet of the pump and the other end is dipped into a sump well where water is stored a foot wall which is a non return wall or one way type wall is fitted at the lower end of the suction pipe in the sump well the foot wall opens only in the upward direction to allow the water to move in the upward direction in the centrifugal pump only a strainer is also fitted at the lower end of the suction pipe now next main part is the delivery pipe a pipe whose one end is connected to the outlet of the pump and other end delivers the water at a required height is known as delivery pipe it means that one end is connected at the outlet of the pump and the other end delivers the water at required height that is all about the main parts of a centrifugal pump thank you very much students